it's a pleasure to have you here. Tell us, uh, how did it all start? When did you start? Who were your influences? Did you have a musical family? How did you start? Well, actually, since I was very, very, very young, maybe like three years old or four years old, I always loved to listen to classical music. Um, I don't have a family which comes from, from musicians, but um, they had, of course, some classical music uh, at home, and I just love it to listen to that, that kind of music. And my mother saw that I was very much interested um, on playing the violin uh, while this music was, was sounding. So she put me in the, in the school when I was five years old. And normally in Spain, you have to do like two or three years uh, music, and then you can choose an instrument. But uh, for me, they put me the instrument already when I was just one year in the school because they saw that I was uh, more developed, let's say, on that. No? So I, I was um, pretty fast, learning pretty fast. So with 60 years old, I was starting with, with guitar. And well, it's all my life, <laughs> let's say. And as I was telling to you, that is not um, not musicians, but my family, part of my family, comes from from Andalusian. And in Andalusian, the guitar it's really the most popular instrument there. And almost all the family they can take a guitar and they can just make some rasgueos and um, to play while a sevillana. Uh, somebody is, is dancing a Sevillana, so everybody can play a little bit guitar, and of course my family as well, but not not as a professional, but but at home was always music when we were all together making some party and having a familiar dinner. We always had a guitar, and we were having fun with with it. How about your early influences, teachers? How did you start to practice? How did you start to develop your technique? Those early years, how were they? Well, I I was developing, of course, with with the years. Uh, I was starting in in Hospitalet, uh, in in my my hometown, and um, I, as far as I can remember, it was pretty easy for me. Uh, the position of, of of the guitar, I was I was um, having pretty natural uh, feelings while, while playing, and uh, during the summers was coming uh, and a woman, a guitarist, Vania del Monaco is called, and she was making some summer courses in my, in my hometown. And she was more um, into festivals. She was more into uh, concerts. Not, my, my teacher in, in my hometown was, of course, just a teacher in the music school, but she was more into the festivals, in the, uh, more in the professional ambient, let's say. So she so that I was pretty uh, talented with, mm -hmm. with the guitar. So she, she wanted to uh, take me as a student, private student. And I was learning really very nice things with her. And um, even if, if my technique and my way of playing, of course, was developing with the time because I was with her. And then uh, I was also in Barcelona with Manuel González. I was in Alicante with Ignacio Rodes. And then I went to, to Austria also with, with Marco Tamayo. And um, as I was saying, at the beginning, maybe I was having a, a kind of technique which I consider it was pretty, pretty correct. But of course, with the kind of technique I was I, I was using, maybe I couldn't uh, play a piano because, for example, my 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 position when I was younger, my my hand it was more more this Sideways. position, mm -hmm. yeah, more size. So I didn't include much the apoyando, which I think now for me, if I have to teach a, a kid, I would include all the technique on, on, on his plane. I will not wait until, he's, uh, until he have already some years playing guitar to include the technique. So I, I think it's important to do it at the beginning. It's, it's easier, let's say, you know? But I was doing it uh, a little bit um, after. The same also with some positions and some movements, uh, right and, and, and left hand. Um, with the time, 
with when you are learning, when you understand a little bit better the music and you understand a little bit more what you want to say with the music, you feel that, okay, maybe what I'm doing is not um, expressing what I really want. And this, you see it always when you record. This, this is something that this year, for example, I was, I was looking, uh, I was uh, experimenting very much this last year in the lockdown while we were all at home. Of course, what we had to do is just play at home and make recordings as we couldn't play in concerts, right? So I was really looking the videos and I said, wow, it doesn't sound as I thought it was sounding. And when I was young, it, it was happening the same, no? And, and when you realize this, then you start to think, okay, what I'm doing wrong or different that is not sounding what I want. And then you start to um, work a little bit more on your movements, on your technique in order to, to be more um, accurate, mm -hmm. can we say? Let me, let me ask something more specific. Yeah. When you were learning in your first uh, few years, what kind of uh, studies uh, did you do? What kind of exercises? What kind of technique? Giuliani, Calevaro, scales. How, do, how did you work on the, all that? I, I didn't learn with any, any book of, of Carnevaro or uh, any of those. Uh, but of course, my teachers, when I was young, they put me some exercises in order to learn how, for example, the slurs mm -hmm. or barres, mm -hmm. uh, in order to, to learn how was the, the, um, the movement no? and, and, and that you have to do to in, mm -hmm. in order to learn that, that movement. But uh, I was doing, of course, some, some um, studies, Sor, Giuliani, um, but you never but, really did pure technique. You always were practicing in the music. Is that what you're saying? Mainly, yes. Uh, of course, I did some some exercises, but not really much. Not mm -hmm. really much. And as I was saying before, uh, when I was young, I was not playing apoyando. Mm -hmm. And of course, I. This is of course now I see that it's. It's not wrong, but it could have been better if mm -hmm. I would do apoyando since I was young. But the good thing that it has that I was just playing uh, tirando, mm -hmm. I think it has helped to have a very powerful tirando mm -hmm. in a way because everything I had to do with tirando. Mm -hmm. And so it, it was developing pretty powerful, probably. Uh, and so Technique was basic things, but mainly was was on the pieces. And I was doing, of course, some some uh, some um, studios mm -hmm. studies and, and easy easy um, pieces. But I should say that since I started with Vania del Monaco, she started to put me a repertoire that it was more demanding. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a moment that I. Uh, I, I didn't learn many of the pieces that probably people did when they are in the first years. Like, for example, I don't know, studies by, by Leo Brower, to mm -hmm. say something. No? Uh, I, I never played them when I was young. So I just go, I went through, uh, f from the very basic studies to, I remember very well when I was very young with Vania del Monaco, Las Folias de España de Giuliani. Mm -hmm. I went directly there, so... Um, not really, not really many studies and many technique um, exercises, actually. No. Tell us more about uh, your musical influences when you were growing up. When you were very young, who did you listen to? What kind of uh, musicians did you follow? Well, uh, when I was when I was um, um, growing in, in in my way of playing and um, on the guitar. Of course, one of my references was uh, David Russell. I uh, also because Banya gave me some some uh, recordings. She she told me what to listen. I didn't know. Of course, I was I was very young, but uh, of course the ones that I was listening the most was was David Russell, Manuel Barroco for some things as well, and for example John Williams for the guitar concertos. Mm -hmm. They were my references as well when I was. 
when I was young. That was in the guitar. How about uh, in general music? In Piano, gen violin. Any artists that uh, you really admired in the beginning? Well, I, uh, I remember very well Alicia de la Rocha. Mm -hmm. very, but, um, yeah, well, when I was when I was child, I, I have to say that I mainly I was listening more guitar. The other instruments I was doing it a little bit a, bit, a little bit after. Uh, tell me something. How do you learn a piece? Every one of us has a different system yeah. how we learn the pieces. How do you work on a new piece? What do you do? Well, this is something very interesting because um, I I was having this kind of conversation with some, some uh, friends in the last weeks, in, in, in the festivals I was, uh, the last weeks. And it's very interesting because when, when you speak with the students and they, well, not with the students, I was speaking with the teachers of the students and they were saying like, a student, when they want to learn a piece, they go to listen directly to some recordings in order to see how it sounds and how, how they should play. But I think this is wrong. I think when you have to learn a new piece, and this is what I do, I like to take the score. Of course, even if I know, this, if I know the music, because now we know uh, pretty all the repertoire, but I didn't play many of those things. But um, when I take the score, I don't like to listen any recording. I don't want to have any influence about any musician, I want to take this score and I want to, to, to investigate what is in, in it. And then I take my own personal uh, view of the piece and then I decide which kind of fingerings helps me to, to say what I want to say in, in, with, with this music. And um, this is mainly what I do at the beginning when I, when I start uh, learning a new piece. First, I like to discover what is in it, mm -hmm. and give my my personal my personal taste, mm -hmm. and and of course after that, then speaking about how to 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 practice the piece, then you go directly to places where um, you have there are more problematic. Let's say, well, this is this is already more um, how to say. Um, specific work, mm -hmm. no, when you want to... Specific technical issues. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly, exactly. But about, about the piece, I like to first give my, my own idea uh, without listening any any musician. Then afterwards, then you can listen and to compare some, some things. But do you, do you practice a lot slowly? Do you practice with the metronome or not at all? How do you do it? What's your system? Well... I, I know I, I, I should practice more with metronome, but I'm a little bit lazy, I have to say, <laughs> to do it. Well, some people don't need to. <laughs> oh, yeah, I think it's good for certain things. Huh? Um, for certain, thing, certain passages, I think it's good to, to, to play with metronome. And for those people who, let's say, like, when there are people that they, they start to learn a piece, and they start to do a lot of rubatos in it, and they lose already which is the, the tempo of the piece. Mm -hmm. this, I think this is wrong. In this case, then they need to uh, practice with metronome the whole piece. But for example, it's not in my case because normally I like to play precise what it's written and then decide where I can do some rubatos, where I can things, take the time. Because otherwise then you are, you are to free in maybe in places where you can't be mm -hmm. that free. Um, so how but, do you make those decisions? It comes naturally to you. How do you do it? Well, it depends uh, how much you know about that style. You have mm -hmm. to know, for example, if you are playing baroque or if you are playing mm -hmm. classical, you know that you can do or you can't do certain things. On this, no. For example, in, in Bach music, you will not put so many legato. Uh, um, uh, glissandos, or you will not play it as 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 romantic music, which it needs much more uh, movement, movement, no? or it needs more um, flexibility. Um, there is something that um, 
I thought it was very interesting. When you start to learn a new piece, in mm -hmm. one or two days, you're already posting videos, you're already playing the piece <laughs> uh, from beginning to end, and you already have pretty much decided what to do. How, did, yeah. how does that happen? Well, of course, it depends the piece. Um, I, I think all of us, we... Not true, because I, I saw know? that in Bach. You were playing the double by Bach 997. <laughs> In one or two days, it was oh. already there. <laughs> so how does that happen with you? I'm interested uh, that, uh, so that we can learn how you do it. Yeah, but I, I don't know what is more difficult, actually, because, okay, in Bach music, you should be very precise. Uh, it's just to learn well the movements, to find a sonority. If you find the right fingerings that it helps you for the sonority you want to, to do, at the end, it's not that difficult because it's just play through. In this, in this Latin American pieces, if you are, if you don't express really every single note and everything is very poor and clear, and express the real feelings of of this music, mm -hmm. then it sounds cold. It's it sounds. But on the other hand, don't you think that uh, sometimes in Latin American music, maybe I could even say the same thing in Spanish music, mm -hmm. some people think it's very expressive, very rhythmic, and then people take a lot of liberties. They confuse lack of precision with expressiveness. Do you agree with that, or do you think it's a little bit too much? Well, it depends which pieces you can take a little bit more, and in some other pieces you can't. For example, in rhythmical pieces, you can't take as much time as, for example, in a more cantabile, like a balada, mm -hmm. where you can take a little bit more time. But the sa uh, now is the same point, like we were speaking before, that you have to really decide where to do it. Because if you have a piece which is a balada, but you don't give, you cannot conduct mm -hmm. the piece, and everything is rubato, and everything is uh, out of time, then it, it's also incorrect you have more chances to do rubatos on this kind of pieces, but it's not the whole piece uh, uh, rubato. But in other pieces like, for example, uh, Maravino or La Alma Llanera, so th they are rhythmical pieces where you cannot really take as much time as when you are playing um, a balada. No? Both are Latin American uh, music, but it's, there are different styles as well. So. It, I think it's important to, to, to make a difference. Okay.